This is the Oregon 518771 backpack sprayer. It comes in a 16 litre and 20 litre size. I decided to go for the 20 litre. The reason I've spent a little bit more money on an Oregon sprayer is because I've got two other sprayers out there made by reputable companies that are just basically falling apart. So I've paid a little bit over the odds in the hopes that I'm going to get a very steady machine that will last a bit longer. So there we have the component parts. The backpack itself, straps are on the back there. The gun components, these three components make up the gun. The pumping lever, and this is part of that uh, assembly. And then filter and the lid, which I'll put straight onto the backpack now for filling it. There are the straps, they're not fixed yet. I'll have a look at that later. It is graduated along the side, so you've got one, five, 10, 15, and 20 litre graduation, so you can see where you're filling it to. And then we've got a bag of assorted fittings and fixtures. There's a hole in the base there that the big lever goes through for pumping up the unit. So I'm going to push it through there and then there's a little clamp thing that connects it which slots into there. And I'll show that in a second. So there's a lever and that is a clamp that keeps it in place. Push the lever through the hole there and it goes right the way through. And then there's a hole in the lever there. I don't know whether you can see but that but there is. And then this clamp just pushes in and it's got a little pin in there. And the pin locates in the hole and keeps everything in place. Now, there's another little bracket there. That's at the bottom. So it's at the bottom of the sprayer. That's got that lever and it's fixed tight. So I'm going to flip it back over. So the next thing is to attach the connecting rod to the rocker bar. So when you put in this bar in, make sure that when you put it in, the top bit, which is the longest bit, is pointing this way towards the pump. So push that through, I'll lay that back down, the washer goes on and then the split pin. So that's that fitted. So that's where we are at the moment. We've got the lever going through the bottom, it comes across there and there's a little fastener that like slots in and it goes in a hole in there. So that's clamped in by the fastener. Then we've got the other arm that goes up to the pump, pushed through, pushed through that little bush there and then split pin in a washer and it goes up and the long bit is there, that's a long bit. So the long bit goes to the top and it's got to be facing the pump bit. So that's where we are at the moment. Put the fixer onto the top of the air chamber. These instructions are really very poor. So next we've got to connect this thing and that goes on there. It just sort of slots on, it doesn't fix yet. So you've got to slot it over the holes there and it's got to be it's got to come out and point down and then this little clip has got to be pointing down the outside of the tank. So next we've got to push this lever through that little clip thing that we've just put on and you can move the pump up and down, it's quite difficult but you can do it so. So that's pushed through and then it says put a pin in it. So that's the last pin. That is the pump sorted. So one of these connections goes on the end there and screws on. So we'll screw that on there, that screws on there. This has actually got an o-ring on it, so this is goes down to the nozzle for the gun, it's got an o-ring on it so that just screws in there. These must all be spare o-rings at the bottom here, so that's tightened up, but there's another o-ring there, look it slots down, goes in a groove, you go down there and then we've got two different nozzles at the, the end that we can attach for the gun. It comes with a spray nozzle and a jet nozzle, so I've got the spray nozzle on there. And that's what I've been left over with. The assembly instructions are absolutely abysmal and Oregon should be looking at that and trying to make them a little bit more user friendly. When you put it together you need to make sure that everything's tight. I've just put the thing on and obviously the pump wasn't tight screwed on at the top there. It's got absolutely covered in uh, weed killer. Partially my fault but you would have thought that the bits that were assembled would have been assembled properly. So this is the spray. And as you can see, it's got a major amount of coverage. I've got to be careful that I don't get the roses. So it needs two or three presses on the lever and then and as you're using it you can kind of feel the pressure dropping off. So just another couple of presses on the lever. Do that thistle. Which? The... 
So that's a spray nozzle. I'll put the jet nozzle on and see what that's like. That's more like a shower head. Just a fine spray coming out. But it's not a fan. I think I prefer this nozzle because you've got a little bit more control with it. You can actually lock the nozzle on just to make life a little bit easier but in all honesty keeping the thing pulled in is not an issue. Okay. So I've really enjoyed using that. It's a very very effective sprayer. Works very well like I said you need to make sure that you tighten everything up before you use it because I've got absolutely covered in weed killer which is, which is not a good thing but it seems to be tight now that we've actually nipped everything up. One thing that's worthy of note is it is very heavy when you've been carrying it for a while. 20, 20 kilograms plus the weight of the backpack means that you need to be fairly strong to use it for any length of time. Obviously the more you use it probably the more used you'll get to it. But it does feel like it's reasonably professional. It does a very good job of spraying and for the money I think it's good value. Anyway I hope you found this review useful and thank you for watching.